today I'm going to be talking about something that's probably going to make a lot of you in this room really uncomfortable, but it's okay. And it's changing the stigma on medicinal marijuana in the United States today. Uh, my background, I've been working with my dad and his company, Green Living Technologies, for the past six years. And what they do is travel all around the world spreading green technology and education through green roofs, green walls, and vertical farms, which you see in the bottom right corner. Uh, more recently, in the past two months, I've been looking more and more into this family story and this girl right here. In the top left, I have a picture of Julia Emerson, and I want you all to pause and think about what she looks like for a second. Does she look like someone who's going to harm you? Does she look like a drug addict? Does she look like someone who should go to jail? No. But what she does look like is your average happy 10-year-old girl. And she's a cannabis patient. Julia has refractory epilepsy, which means she has grand mal seizures, which cannot be easily controlled by regular pharmaceutical drugs. Cannabis has changed her life. And in October of 2013, her family and her mom, Christine Emerson, who is a nurse practitioner, began to campaign for medicinal cannabis and to get her daughter this drug. For over a year, she had to fight, and she even moved and relocated to Colorado for several months just to try out cannabis. Her mom had to leave her job as a nurse practitioner. She had to be pulled out of school, and now she's a year and a half behind in school because of having to fight and go find this drug to make her life better. Julia has refractory epilepsy and 620 grand mal seizures a year before medicinal cannabis on two different pharmaceutical drugs with harsh side effects. That's pretty bad. And after receiving medicinal cannabis, that number went down to 200 seizures a year with no side effects on one plant. A couple months ago, Ms. Oliveri came to me with this magazine and said, read it. She said that this story will make you move, and it did. And so I looked into it, and I talked to Christine Emerson on the phone for over an hour and a half about their story, and it really touched me, and it pushed me more into why I wanted to talk today. So we can understand the cannabis plant as, you know, some people view it as a street drug and a recreational thing, but it needs to be understood understood, excuse me, as more of a medicine than a drug. There are over 500 known chemical compounds in marijuana and cannabis as a plant, 66 of which are called cannabinoids because they're independent to the cannabis plant. That means they can't be found in other plants and they can't be replicated. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, a neurosurgeon and chief, CNN's chief medical correspondent, is notorious for his weed one, two, and three documentaries on Colorado's pot industry and the medicinal industry. His quote I have is, while science has not yet shown the exact role or mechanism for all of these various compounds, evidence is mounting that these compounds work better together than isolation. That is the entourage effect. The entourage effect is why drugs like Marinol, which is synthetic THC, won't work because you don't have more than one compound in the drug. You can't replicate something that has multiple compounds in it. It's just not the same as having one plant. It's not the same. So as far as, as, far as pharmaceuticals go, pharmaceuticals versus medicinal cannabis, I have three numbers up there from 2013. Those are death tolls in the United States. Three different things. Alcohol, drugs, and cannabis. Cannabis, that's zero. In 2013, medicinal cannabis had zero, drug in, zero direct deaths in the United States. But 46,471 is from over-the-counter medicines and big pharmaceuticals. That's pretty bad. And 29,000, that's alcohol-induced deaths. That's pretty bad, too. But medicinal cannabis is nothing to be afraid of if it has zero deaths. What can be treated with medicinal cannabis? You know, people make such a big stink about it, and uh, what if it only treats one or two things? Well, that's not true. There is an ever-growing list of things that can be treated with this plant. Chronic pain, muscle spasms, glaucoma, epilepsy, autoimmune, PTSD, that's just the beginning. It goes on and on, and this even treats, helps treat people with their chemo because it reduces nausea, vomiting, depression, anything related. It's just, 
there's so many, so many different applications, and that's another thing that I'm going to be talking about. You can put it in a solve. You can put it topicals. You can make pills. You can make drinks. You can make food. You can make honey. You can just take a pill. You don't even have to know you're taking medicinal cannabis to consume it. It can have a different name and be a pill in a jar that you get over the counter and it could still have the same effect, but people would not know and not associate it with a drug from the street. So you might hear me saying all these great things and be like, okay, so why is it gone? Why, is it, why are we struggling to have this in society today? Why is there a big stigma behind it? And before I go into why, I'm going to start with the 1600s. 1600s America, farmers were required to grow hemp. It was a law. And in Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, it could be used as currency. That's the same as money, the paper stuff we keep in our pocket. And in 1910, the Mexican Revolution sent Mexican immigrants pouring into the United States. And what was popular among Mexican immigrants? The term marijuana versus cannabis. Marijuana was a foreign term to everyone in the United States. They didn't know what it meant. So all these immigrants came pouring in with their recreational trend, and people feared it. People didn't know what to think. And they associated it with a bad social class and a poor reputation. And then later, 10 years later, the prohibition of the 1920s, alcohol, goodbye. So it made it even easier, combined with Reefer Madness, which was a film on the dangers of marijuana and why you need to stay away from it, why you need to stay away from low-class people, combined with all that, and the prohibition, it made it really easy for the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 to get hemp and cannabis removed from the United States entirely. I mean, literally, plants were burned to the ground. They just, they were said goodbye. It was gone. It wasn't until 1970 that it was placed in Schedule 1. But this is really bad. Marijuana and cannabis were placed in the same category as LSD, heroin, PO, MDMA, and cocaine. As of today, we have 23 states and Washington, D.C. legalized, but we have to thank California in 1996 for that. 26 years, or 20 years ago today, not today, sorry. <laughs> 20, 20 years ago, 1996, California legalized with Prop 215. That opened the door for more research and development nationally. Just from California legalizing in 96, Today, in 2016, we have 23 states and Washington, D.C. with legalized medical marijuana, and that's ever-growing. That number is expanding every year. Let's look at Colorado. I'm not here to support recreational cannabis, but I'm saying it could be good, too. First to legalize in the United States for rec. Crime rate's down almost 9% in 2014. That's pretty cool. And they under-budgeted for the revenue, so Colorado was allowed and had the opportunity to put $8 million back into state education programs and youth programs and re-employ people who previously had to be left, let, let off from their medical jobs. Overall, society can't be afraid. 23 states and DC wouldn't be legal if this was really something to fear. Someday this might be needed in your family. When I was talking on the phone with Christine Emerson, she told me never in a million years would she as a nurse practitioner have considered a street, a street drug to be beneficial and critical to her daughter's health. I'm going to leave you guys with one quote today. And it's from DEA Administrative Law Judge Francis Young. He said, quote unquote, in strict medical terms, marijuana is far safer than many foods we commonly consume. For example, eating 10 raw potatoes can result in a toxic, toxic response. By comparison, it's physically impossible to eat enough marijuana to induce death. Marijuana in its natural form is one of the safest therapeutically active substances known to man. And I think it's time we start defying the stigma on marijuana in society. Thank you.